Yo, what up? This episode is sponsored by Backblaze Online Backup. It's a simple way to back up all your movies, yeah. photos, videos, music, and all your other data. That's right, data. Ooh. For just $5 a month. It's simple, and you can access all your data. Data. That's right, data. Ooh. Online from wherever you are. I like the way you say data. Try it absolutely free by going to backblaze.com slash C. P? C. Mm. Mm. These days I seem my best. Need be lay me to rest. Smoke, drink, relieve my stress. Hard time, they got the best of me, I guess. These days I seem my best. Need be lay me to rest. Smoke, drink, relieve my stress. Hard time, they got the best of me, I guess. Yo! Wow. That's my joint, man. That's a hell of a song. That to start. is my song. that's my shit. <laughs> there, man. I swear. What's it, up? This is Ergo. It is. That is true. I'm Kiss. I am Damon. And uh, every week here on WHBK, ErgoRadio.com, SoundCloud, iTunes, Wizard Radio, all the places you hear us, we showcase and celebrate Chicago and beyond. A live long form conversation with an artist, organizer, mm-hmm. space maker, yep. person reshaping the culture of our city yep. and our world for the more equitable and the more creative. Mm-hmm. How you feeling, Dame? I'm feeling really good man uh I'm, I'm busy in this world right now I, I i walked in on a conference call so i'm feeling i'm feeling like an a-hole because i like had, <laughs> <laughs> i had to do the like ooh, one sec I, I guess i can't pantomime on the radio but, no, but there was a, there was a finger <laughs> you know the, the, the hand on the ear oh I, 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 the, the fake high so i feel bad that i've not been as a uh, present before we got started well, but i'm we here and i'm we excited. got an hour we so do we, we do we can and, warm up and the good news is is there are no conference calls involved in this show i hate I have a special place in the hate part of my heart for conference calls. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If I'm doing it, I need to be on it. <laughs> uh, before we get to our wonderful guest, a few community announcements. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the kid got a DJ gig. So I'm DJing an open mic tomorrow at Trap by Chicago. That's empathy, a... empathy, empathy, empathy. <laughs> 7955 South Halstead. Uh, Ashland, pardon. Uh, the People Say Open Mic Series, uh, number three. Are you on 79 for Ashland? Absolutely. That's the that's that's the hood. Right there. I grew up over there. <laughs> Come through. It's a there. It's an open mic out of this space called Trap House, uh, run in part by uh, Mashan Ali, who we've talked. Anyway, it's going to be great. It's an open mic tomorrow, seven thirty to ten thirty, um, and I will be DJing. And then also tomorrow night from nine p.m. to midnight at the Breathing Room space mm-hmm. is the Puerto Rico Will Rise kickback uh, with a bunch of live performances and a raffle and all kinds of stuff, raising money for Barico Resi- Resistance and a bunch of different orgs that are doing work on the island. Saturday night is a real crack and hood wazi yeah. featuring I'm in it. The kid the kid is there. We gonna do it. I like we both described ourselves as the kid in Did the media announcements. Ah, it's the, pretty good. The children are present. <laughs> also on that uh show are Miriam Kaba, Rick bang, Wilson, Bang, uh, and uh Xavier Ramey. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, I believe, at AMFM Saturday night. Uh, and if you can't make it out, it will be live streamed on Facebook Live. Go to the Hoodwadzi on Facebook. Um, and then on the 20th, that's Tuesday, at the Westside Justice Center is a screening of Dolores, uh, which is a documentary about Dolores Huerta, who is part of the um, farm worker movement on the West Coast um, and is still around and doing amazing work. It's a, I saw the documentary when it was screened in the city, I don't know, five or six months ago. It's fantastic. It was life-changing for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, And I strongly recommend that. And the folks over at the West Side Justice Center do great work anyway. So go through, support that. Uh, There's a screening of Brujos at the Cultural Center on Wednesday. And then also on Wednesday, uh, Ergo alum Hanif Abdurraqib, who I had the pleasure of spending some time in Tampa with uh, this past week, is in conversation with Jessica Hopper, who's one of the best music editors and writers in the world. Uh, and they're in conversation at Women and Children First Bookstore. That's Wednesday, the 21st. And then lastly, mm-hmm. back at the Breathing Room space is the next edition of the Breathing Room series. Uh, this one titled, We Are What We Need. That's next Friday, the 23rd. Uh, so it's free food, free workshops, an open mic, free store. All, you know, the stuff that we do. You know, it's happening. Uh, and that's from 5 to 9 p.m. You got anything else you want to throw um, in there? I'm announced out. Let's let's not announce anything else. Just, you know, you, you're you on the internet. Just look it up. Let's announce our wonderful... We are here. It's yes. time to do it. This is an exciting one. You want to uh, do it? Yeah, man. Uh, uh, a big homie in the community and in the city. Uh, uh, a special, special talent. And I'm going to say the most unique voice I have ever heard. 
we got Maceo here of the Oh My's. Hey, what's, what's up, up man? Woo-hoo. So, so as we like to start our show with a, a two part question. Right now, in this time, define time however you want. So that could be this hour, this day, week, month, decade. But let you know, we'll keep it closer. <laughs> <laughs> Century. You know, in, in this time, how is the world treating you, and how are you treating the world? Ah, okay. Right now. Whatever that point is, mm-hmm. uh, the world is treating me great. Um, I've like I'm coming on the on the other side of a long project and really reinvig- like reinvigorated, like excited about working and writing and making new music and releasing music. I've been working on at the crib with Nick and by myself and with friends and just excited. Yeah, so that's. A new project that's like wrapped up, or it's like wrapped. we're like in the like ten, the last ten percent, which is like where you sparkle yeah. all the pretty. Which is the cool part that shit. takes a really long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm well, int- no, 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 no. The, I, we're hopefully we're done with the really long time. We got <laughs> deadlines now. I, I'm intrigued with with that last margin of ten percent. What, what what is some of that like for a novice? What is some of that sparkling or some of that pretty? Uh, for like? uh, when you when you're working on a project that's taken so long, this project for us personally, it's taken a really long time. And, um, but you know, usually your inclination is like immediately jump out and be like, okay, it's done. Let's put it out. I'm, I'm, let's get it out to the world. And luckily, um, our manager and friend was like, wait up, put the brakes. Let's put like a, a little bit of time to like, look back at it, think about it and see, you know, the ways that you can put a little bit of yourself more in it, you know, Mm -hmm. or, or just make sure that you, you know, you, you, a month later, I'm like, Oh damn, I wish I would have added this or taken this out or said this better or more eloquently, whatever the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you a like naturally inclined reviser? Yeah. 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 I can't, especially like if it's my voice, Mm. (laughs) I'm going to have to hear it like saying something (laughs) and then I'm going to have to say it like a thousand times in different stages and different places in front of different people. See, we get away with it. We just don't listen to it (laughs) after. But if we had to then go and perform (laughs) the same same. words of the podcast over and over again, yeah, I might be a little more careful. How about you? Are you, Dame, are you like a naturally inclined reviser? Uh... Definitely. Anar. De- <laughs> De- uh Definitely when it comes to like uh, my writing and my, ver- you know, I haven't released any art since like 2012, 2013. So I have like oh, you're five, you're dude, five to six years worth of like verses that can still get an edit. Uh, so, so, <laughs> so certainly, uh, but then my voice, that's a whole nother thing that, I, that like, I was, like just this is a really good example or like, if if Jennifer like records me on like Instagram story and shout just hear it, shout out baby lady. If if I I hear the like angst or the strain that I put in my voice and that I'm not talking in my normal mm-hmm. state that I'm putting something on and hearing that back like can just shred me to pieces. Yes. I'm like, yes. oh man, this is I'm I'm not talking like myself most of the time. Yeah, and that's pretty unnerving. <laughs> And then you're like, what? What is myself? Do you yes. ever get that question? I mean, I, I, I'm getting good. To, I'm getting closer to that answer. Uh, but it's just like, damn, all these people that I've been talking to, I would think I was whack. Like, I mean, they don't, they don't know. But it's like that's pretty whack. Uh, and like, get like relaxed, dude. Just like take deep breaths. Yes. Yeah. And be more into like even right now, I'm like now being aware of like I actually have a lower register. Hmm. And, Radio that voice. I, and that I, oh, yeah. I, I I go up and I have a strain in my chest. So I go def- after dark. <laughs> <laughs> that but, throws me off. So for you on that strain, I mean, that's something that's so when Dame said, like, you have the most unique voice you've ever. ever heard. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure, you know, people ask about it all this time. But one thing that comes across is just the physicality of it. Um, and like, it sounds like it's physically... <laughs> painful <laughs> especially since you're such a soft-spoken in a, yeah. in a beautiful way not in yeah, a negative yeah, yeah, way yeah. in a way that you're like man i hope he's okay <laughs> is it physically painful um and have you had to learn how to make it less yeah painful? yeah exactly um when i started doing it I didn't really i didn't really think about it and then as it you know as my voice grew and then also like started playing more and using it more mm-hmm. more regularly mm-hmm. and you know um taking it for granted hmm. then i started to realize you know oh, this can this could just 
disappear. Uh, yeah. and, and I lost my voice for a little while. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's when I was like, oh, I don't want to ever go through this again. So starting to learn how to take care of it better, um, realizing that, you know, just like anything in life, you know, nothing is constant or there. Forever, What's your vocal so. cord self-care regimen? <laughs> <laughs> my vocal like, so so far it's um, you don't even have to answer I just check, want to ask that question checking myself when I'm out late or mm. in loud spaces or drunk mm. uh, to make sure I don't talk loud <laughs> yeah because I'm quiet usually and mm-hmm. so when I'm in loud spaces people can't hear me mm. so then I start talking really loud and then I wake up like ah. Where's my voice? Yeah. So that's pretty much that's as far as I've got so far. <laughs> so I, I'm interested in like, you know, in trying to get past the like, oh, what's your, you know, how do you yeah. do the scale yeah. uh, of thinking of voice in like the larger sense of the yeah. word or the concept? Totally. Um, because your like vocal performance is so unique. Has that taught you about? voice in the sense of like you know how it gets used for like writing or like i found my voice now, right like totally. on some uh dream girl shit. right right <laughs> <laughs> so really what damon's asking is it's which dream girl. <laughs> i found the voice you gave to me as she's in the studio oh, crying yeah. uh but yeah but I, I that that as i was like getting ready to talk to you that's kind of yeah how, how does that transition well like, parallel work so um especially like I guess pick off right where the last question ended, which was when I lost my voice, right? <laughs> Young transition and, game. <laughs> when was that? Just uh, like that time was one. sometime like shoot, like three years ago, two and a half years ago, oh, or maybe I'm maybe my time is off somewhere between. But the, like you were professional in the midst, yeah, yeah, of in the like, midst of y'all are really right, getting it, right? Yeah. Exactly, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it was gone, um, mm. and you know. Being, you know, in my 20s and and just like growing it, growing my voice and, and sh- shit like that, I just didn't really, uh, you know, think about it too much. And then I lost it. And then I realized it was a, it, there was a part of me that I'm no longer to, able to express. And mm. what that is or who that is or what part of me that is was missing. And so I had a lot of time to sit Mm. with it um and the process i think this project has been like because then it became something that was foreign away from me Mm. for a little bit of time then getting reacquainted and being able to recognize you know what parts of me are here and Mm. and especially years later now like you know what parts of me i've shed uh so now that's that's that sounds like a a a really deep and like transformative process what's one thing you learned about about you from feeling that um the easiest thing to i guess like like is uh trusting you know trusting Mm -hmm. um because you know when you get reacquainted with different parts of yourself sometimes they look or feel foreign and so that's all yeah so and in that trust you know i think about you as like a like hardcore collaborator, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and that trust can be in your sub, but it can also be in other people. Yes. Um, and so there are like a few different collaborations I'm curious about, but not in the like, you know, what was it like? Yeah, with this yeah. rap? But specifically with you and Nick, mm-hmm. who've been making music together for so long. Um, Shout out, Nick. Yeah. First of Nick all, Nick Hennessy. Squad. <laughs> Mustache squad. <laughs> first and foremost, for someone who's never met Nick, how would you describe him? Um, he is a uh, tall white man with a very imposing mustache. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a good guy. <laughs> How about beyond his mustache and imposition? Uh, <laughs> there is nothing beyond the mustache. <laughs> nothing beyond the mustache. <laughs> the mustache, the mustache, mustache is. is. And it is the mustache. He the mustache and he just fades away. <laughs> no, it's an uh, invisible man <laughs> type situation. No, um, it's been... What's, what it, it's also taught me this long process is... Um, really getting to know my relationship with writing and writing particularly with Nick, because that's, you know, we started making music when I was just getting out of high school. Oh, wow. And so for all intents and purposes, you know, we've, I've done most of at least my writing or writing that's been released to the world with Nick. Um, and that relationship has grown for um, like, I guess it's been oh, like 10 years or something, mm. something like that, showing my age. Uh, and, you know, there's been 
tons of it's all about we've just learned how to communicate uh mm -hmm. where before it used to be butting heads or you know trying to talk over each other or or put ideas over each other it's gotten to a place where in general we don't really even have to talk a whole bunch mm. uh because we know each other's sensibilities and what both him and i collectively don't like or do like mm -hmm. and um and yeah it's was the at what point in the timeline was the Oma, Omai's idea or or basket crafted? Were y'all starting off making music as the well, Omai's? Or, or, or it was, was all it was, it was, it was, yeah, yeah, I like that. Uh, <laughs> when did you weave the fibers <laughs> into something that could carry something? <laughs> it was kind of something that came super haphazardly. Um, I had... Uh-oh, I think we're getting into a Bell Biff DeVore ball. <laughs> I'll explain what I mean by that, but tell right. your story. <laughs> I had... And that's some kid from my high school into buying a bunch of studio time. I told him I had a, a band and <laughs> a bunch of songs. I had no band and had about like five half written songs. Okay. So you got another kid to buy you <laughs> studio time? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. How'd you pull that off? Um... Are y'all still cool or can I, no, can no, I make fun no. of him a Oh, yeah. No, you can't. You didn't, right. you didn't do shit with it. <laughs> <laughs> You're really goofed, guy. But it worked out okay. So I, I feel like, and, and like, I don't know if you identify as yeah. hip hop. I put you in the hip hop world. I feel like the Chicago hip hop scene, so much of it is just like finessing kids oh, yeah. in the suburbs. Like, oh, yeah. No, it's essentially like that. That, that exactly. is like what? Like 90%. Exactly. Of like the underground did. That's how. That's how like, we. It's like session that's five. the answer to the Chicago yeah. Renaissance. <laughs> Finesse kids from the suburbs, and then seventy five percent of those kids they played the long game and finessed those kids back. Ooh, that's the, the, the refinesse. The the, you the have to be worried about the <laughs> refinesse. It, it will come every time. That's a, yes. that's a that's a classic white move. <laughs> uh, so you finessed uh, the, for the uh, studio and, session. And so we had the time. The time and. I I'd, I'd never made music with Nick. Uh, we just like known each other through mutual friends, like seeing each other out, um, and didn't really particularly even like each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and <laughs> did you particularly <laughs> dislike each other? We were just the two people that like I would step up with to put my shit in the ox cord, and then he'd be like, "Yeah, it's a good song. All right, word. Let me put my shit." <laughs> so, anyways, yeah. uh, it's a story as old as time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we. Anyways, a mutual friend was like, yo, you make music, he makes music. And I ran into him at Lollapalooza, didn't have a phone, wrote his number on my arm. And next two weeks, we were in the session, made a bunch of songs. And then we're like, well, what are we going to do with it? And a friend was like, the oh my. And I was like, all right, for sure. Well, that's what it is. And so that's kind of how it happened. <laughs> that is definitely a Bell Biv DeVoe moment. So let me explain what <laughs> right. I mean by that. This is a segment I have. It's about the, the, that magic moment of uh -huh. naming. And it's ironic because I think Bell Biv DeVoe is a really yeah. terrible name for a group. <laughs> <laughs> but I think about the, 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 the magic of a moment. So yeah. I imagine the studio sessions of when Poison was being made, right? The fact that Bell Biv DeVoe only really made one song, but they could tour for the next 30 years. Oh, yeah. Just thought, like, if a new edition fell apart, Bell Biv DeVoe could still do shows because that song is so magical. So I just imagine the first time, like, that high note was hit. Eh, 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 eh. Like, they were just in the studio, like, yo, we got it. We're good. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> Sign the check. <laughs> and so when we talk to, like, when somebody has a clever organization name or, you know, some, something was come together, I just call that the Bell Biv DeVoe moment yes. because they still... Have such a special place in our heart. And to that to that point, are there other moments that y'all have had maybe since then that either felt like Bell Bib Devo moments <laughs> or felt like they were going to be and then weren't? Because y'all, I mean, Ooh. for those who don't know, the two of you have been making music, like you said, for a long time and have been traversing this music community and this scene and this industry for years. Yeah. So uh, yeah, like these brink moments of like, oh, we're good. And then it doesn't work. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, I think any musician knows, like, you're going to have a million of those. Uh, and once, and I saw, once you get past the, the like, okay, well, this has to be it. This is going to be it. Yeah. And no magic moment, nothing happens in those magic moments. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just, you know, that's not mm -hmm. the way things happen. Um, and that's also not the way that, at least for me personally, I've found that I make what, what I know to be, at least for me, uh, magical or pretty or beautiful or mm, yeah. whatever, powerful. Uh, that's where the weight of whatever I I, th I think 
you know, I can drink. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's, no, that's, it's, that's tricky, especially if you have other people around, like the rest of Bell Bib DeVoe. Like, this is, <laughs> like, this is yeah, I, I don't think this is it. Oh, but, but, but that spontaneity is important. I mean, to the story you told us right before we got on mic about the, you know, the track we played on the intro, the, the These Days yeah. track, which oh, is yeah. like, so, was such a great moment. Like, you know, as a big TDE Absol fan, like when, when that came as a surprise track, I was like, yo, like not only is this maybe my favorite part of the project, but like, this is so big for them. And I was just oh, happy yeah. for y'all. But the fact that that just it, was random. It, <laughs> it was random. It was random. And like, we had had the song on ice for like two years and never really figured out exactly what to do with it. We knew we loved it. And then randomly via a tweet, when we found out his album was called these days, got sent out to him and he rocked with it. And like, sent back and was like yeah here's a verse so like oh <laughs> damn okay it's gonna be ready for the world and so that's the sort of like that's also part of that's a good example of you know i knew when we recorded it, it was like this is this, this is, is raw <laughs> yeah. like i don't know what's gonna happen to this but this is raw and then it like just sat by the wayside forever but you know there were different points where we felt like oh we need to force it we need to get this person on it this yeah. person on it and we didn't uh and it ended up finding its home and life somewhere else. And I'm glad we did. <laughs> yeah. So that that kind of expectation, though, or that, that, like, the temptation to try to force it, it sounds like that's something that you've grown to, the, like, not needing to, to have uh, that. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of, I mean, sometimes, sometimes to a fault. I'm sure, like, the rest mm. of my band is like, man. We could have forced it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you know, like, one of the things throughout this process has been, uh, I've been super, like, super like revising everything I write constantly and I'll lay down verses and the band will be like, all right, let's not get our hopes up. I don't know if I like, I'm not going to say if I like this or not, or decide if I like this, I'm going to wait two weeks until he decides if he's going to erase it. And then I'll decide <laughs> if I like it. Cause you know, get the emotion yeah, 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 it's yeah, like exactly. A, it's <laughs> like a, a, a parent who like really likes all their child's like boyfriends or girlfriends or like, they just keep breaking <laughs> yeah, up with exactly. It's like, nah, I'm not going to like this I'm not one. Getting connected like, until I'm, you bring them to Christmas. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, exactly. You bring them to Christmas and they make it to Easter. Right. <laughs> And I'll show some effect. <laughs> exactly. So I, I want to I want to take a a, a step back uh, because you know we talk about sometimes there's like a a, a golden or it's almost like a mythical list mm -hmm. of folks who's like all right we really want to have them up here or or what we are attempting to accomplish or create with this show will be incomplete without certain folks and you are definitely like a, a check that's like a, a, another step in the direction like we're doing this right but the the moment where it was like oh no we have to make this happen <laughs> is the fact that we found a crazy intersection. So for folks who are just, oh, oh my, <laughs> yeah, you forgot already oh my God. for those who, for, who are just, oh my, or Maceo fans, um, and don't really know what we do here. Like we, we cover the like political social movement space, as well as the cultural artistic space and are, are working to not make those separate things, but have it be one intersectional, like, you know, thing. And that's not new. There's other folks who do that same type of work. Not as well, though. Not They're not in these streets like Ergo. That's all. But hey, we'll get to them later. Um, Coming for your podcast. <laughs> so we were in, at part of a, a political dialogue <laughs> conference in the weekend. It was early in the morning and we were on the bus and we were explaining to folks what we do. And a, a, a friendly middle-aged black gentleman said, you might know my son. <laughs> And we ended up, <laughs> I love how funny it says to you. We ended up spending a weekend with your father engaged in dense political dialogue and discussion. Yeah. And to yeah. figure out that that is like where you come from, which is so intriguing and so kind of eye opening of like how dynamic your, your story must be. So tell us a little bit about your father. We could pull yeah. in some, some stories. Also, would you be willing to spend a weekend in tens days? Like, oh my God. I'm, that's, Let's that's, talk that's about Pops. Shout that's, out to Pops. That's, yes. Shout out my dad. Shout out my mom. Shout out to mom. Uh, Shout out to moms. Um, yeah, my dad's a professor. My mom's also a professor. Um, and my whole life up until I left the house um, and some afterwards has been in like in either political work, sitting at meetings because we don't have a babysitter, <laughs> sitting at lectures because there's no babysitter, <laughs> uh, in academia and 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 a lot of just like, uh, my parents really pushed me and I'm blessed that like, I don't know, that they put me in different places very young and exposed me to different different 
reading and I don't know yeah. that just a blessing. Um, I don't know. Now, now I'm getting all lost because I'm talking about my family. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That means we did our yeah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I love them a lot. Yeah. yeah. What uh, what's one? It doesn't have to be like an like a abstract idea, but like one piece of the world that you appreciate that you learned from one of your parents. So like it could be just like a random thing about uh, politics in I, the 70s or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a, there's a lot of those. I think the one of the things that. I learned from them and I'm still continuing to learn every single time I like talk to them on the phone <laughs> or see them um, is, and I'm always just so um, really in awe of um, the fact that the work and the love and the effort that they put is all into, you know, themselves and each other in love, but really like other people. Um, and that for that to be, uh, the work that, you know, people do every day, um, you know, a lot of people don't get to do that or don't mm -hmm. don't step out and force themselves to do that. And to grow up around that, I think, um, definitely, like, impacted me, um, mm -hmm. um, you know, that it's not supposed to be for yourself or else you don't really got very much. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. And and <clears throat> I think I in talking when, when we were at uh, Raven's listening party yeah. or release party or whatever, it was so a great party. Yeah, that. it was dope. Yeah. It was By super way, dope. Shout out to the open bar. Shout out to <laughs> right. all the folks uh, it was each, uh, serving the hors d'oeuvres. I was killing them joints <laughs> 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 with no shame. Everybody was being cool. I was smashing. I had like nine cupcakes. Yeah, all that free stuff I consumed. But <laughs> so if you were wondering where those cupcakes were, <laughs> Raven, they I ate them. Um, but shout out to Raven's mom, yes. as always. But uh, what, what I what I think in talking to you in that moment, starting to realize that the, I, I'm observing a pattern of like educators and academic folks raising artists. Yeah, right. And so like you think even Chicago, I'm pretty sure Lupe, Common, and Kanye's all parents were professors or educators. I know like Earl Sweatshirt and like the list that was a famous poet. Yeah, yeah the the list just kind of keeps e expanding of 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 how that works. And you know you would think. That you you know they would follow into academia, but I I think there's something about having all that access to information and what you were saying, and I don't want to like steal your yeah. thunder is seeing like the institutional bullshit, exactly. but also having a critical lens right. is like I am definitely I'm not, not doing that, <laughs> so I'm I still going to be exactly. engaging ideas, but in a totally different exactly. world. No, I that was that was sort of the biggest thing because I know that everybody in my life and definitely my parents are like, oh, he's the academia, like. You know, I definitely thought for myself that was where I was going to be at. And then I got to college and I was like, I don't know about this. <laughs> I, I know about this. <laughs> I'm good. Um, you were teaching yeah. me why I don't want to do yeah. this. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, I think there's definitely a connection um, because also it also you're in the world of ideas in academia mm -hmm. um, and for that to be like be surrounded by by as a child or whatever growing up um it's it leaves a lot of possibilities and yeah. so where do you find whether it's like intellectual ideas or artistic ideas where are you finding rooms where you still feel that buzz of being surrounded by ideas um in general i mean it's 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 the community here, uh, mm -hmm. like my friends uh, who in general are all tremendously talented people, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and challenging each other, um, both like personally as well as um, as musically or artistically or whatever the case may be. Uh, that's like, I think the biggest blessing I've had in my life as an adult, um, you know, um, is... Uh, the community people that are here because it's it's very special and uh, definitely has sustained me um, and enriched my life. Have you thought seriously about being somewhere else? Like in the last eight years, let's say, been like I'm out of here. Um, no, mm -hmm. uh, no, I don't think I could ever live anywhere else. I mean, I could like like be gone for like um like a couple months Look, or we maybe. could all spend three months in LA. <laughs> right. hey, hey, hey. No one disagrees. Yeah, you know, but that's I I don't think there's any other place that could be home. And I was talking about this with another artist who was talking about leaving leaving the city for LA. And you know, 
they were like, well, you know, I've like, I just feel like I've done everything I can here. Like, you know, I'm just kind of done with, done with, you know, this, I'm ready for new, new spaces. And they're not from Chicago. Mm. And that was the first thing I thought I was like, oh yeah, of course. Like I like that might be the situation. You might've hit all the open mics. <laughs> right, <you know? laughs> right, right. You know, but like that's for me, I don't think I could really exist, um, exist anywhere else or at least not without this being home base. And and that's a, and that's like an educated stance because you're not someone who's like, hasn't gone. To yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I'm like, you've I, had full access yeah, and yeah, experience yeah, just, these, I'm, these other environments. Yeah, and I'm good. I'm, <laughs> what, one quick moment before, because we're about to transition out, just one quick moment about like Pops and just how much of a dad <laughs> thing he did. And I, I just want to see if you remember or where you were. So it's oh, like geez. eight in the morning, which is like an ungodly hour to me. <laughs> it, it, like the fact that I was awake and present and like really not trying to talk to these two people. Like it was, it was, I was already like uncomfortable to try not to be visibly uncomfortable uh he, he like kind of realized this connection that we probably traveled to the same circle i'm like oh yeah we're, we're cool you know and i kind of like look up to you kind of in the, in the social way and it, like you kind of one of the big homies in a sense so i'm like yeah he knows me but i'm not like his boy he calls you at like oh, 8 yeah. 15 8 at the sale. <laughs> i'm with one of your friends it's name i'm like he might not even like recognize my first name off bat like that yeah, <laughs> and no, put us on the phone like a parent does yeah. I, no, I, 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 like halfway through the conversation i was like oh sh- oh <laughs> What's yes, up? Yes. Like, there's nothing we have to talk about right now. Yeah, like, like, oh yeah. So I'll, I'll talk to you when I see you in Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> there wasn't like a busy. He was like setting up a play. Yeah, yeah. Like, was, that's guess. exactly what he it was. was. Like, dad, I have one of your like, friends dad, here. Yes. <laughs> It's like it's like when my grandma used to go like, oh, there's a new kid down the block. Like you're, you're the same age. You can right, right. Play. Like, are you friends with every sixty eight year old? <laughs> like this is not how that works. So is, so is, does he do those type of things? Yes. That- oh, constantly. Oh, constantly. <laughs> constantly. I'm glad you got that in there. That's very important. Yeah. The record must right, show that. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> so shout out to that. Oh, but to the way that you were just describing, like the the kind of overall big hominess. Um, you know, I think I see you with now, like so many folks, whether it's like, I kind of really resent the word like mentor, but being someone who people go to, to help think through their ideas and feel like they have a creative partner who can help push them. You know, I'm thinking about Cain in particular and seeing the two of you even like perform together. At one point I thought y'all were brothers. (laughs) Like actually. We are. (laughs) How how common is that misconception? Uh, um, I mean, I guess now less uh, less common because yeah, you just put, put it, it on the radio. Oh, oh I apologize. <laughs> They're trying to run a joke that's, that's on everybody. This is hardcore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Real um, news. <laughs> no, um, I mean none of this fake sibling. Right, right. <laughs> what is what is your government relations to each other? Uh, no, um, and that's that, like that's like a perfect example of like I don't know people that are in my life and friends that uh, have pushed me and. Um, even, even in times and spaces where, you know, you haven't, or I haven't felt, um, like, um, not completely there present or struggling with whatever, um, Mm -hmm. to be around and supported by, um, a lot of people who are incredibly talented and really beautiful people and will constantly inspire you. Um, when I'm not feeling it or don't see it in myself, uh, I, I see, uh, like, you know, the light and magic and the people that, you know, around me and show me love and, um, that we cook, that cook food with, (laughs) because that's, that's really, that's really where, you know, goes You have been known to chef. Yes. Yes. (laughs) What are the specialties? Oh, uh, anything, 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 but. So to that point though, what do you think they see in you? The way you, uh, you say you see that energy in them. Oh, uh, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> you I'm not shit. <laughs> Any of you who know me know that. Um, but if you were to guess, yeah, what would you say? Um, I don't know. Hopefully, um, hopefully somebody that uh, is is there to oh, listen, a, bro. Really you know, I don't know. I mean, yeah. somewhere they're there to listen, and you know, I don't really try and um, do much more than that, um, mm. and maybe cook some food for you. Mm. That's, yeah. So let's get deeper into the dish. <laughs> I think one of the few times that we've like hung out, hung out was back when you were still in the house in Wicker Park and oh, yeah. grilling 
the hell out of some oh yeah oh yeah that's that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's nothing. uh you know <laughs> catch the summertime pig roast you know oh, do that you talking know like a full pig yeah oh yeah like oh yeah with the face oh yeah with the face you know <laughs> yeah all that where are you getting a full pig uh we got our sources you know <laughs> <laughs> not gonna divulge it you know and lived a, it lived a good life <laughs> <laughs> am i remembering that? i feel like there was a video four or five years ago that was based around like a barbecue oh yeah there was there was an old video uh yeah since disappeared from the world <laughs> <laughs> from like a like a an animal cruelty no no, no like, a, like a music video yeah 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 so, yeah. so are, y- are y'all on some real like no name stuff you delete you delete things that <laughs> oh yeah 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 oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. why yeah why yeah exactly uh why, why, why do you um <laughs> that wasn't a <laughs> i think um you know like the funny thing about like particularly making music for me is in the time that we're in often um, there's so much more that isn't the music that's involved in the music. And then by that, I mean, you know um, and not like, but you know, like back in the day, not always, you know, but like, it's like the musician makes the music, it's like the expression is in the music. Right. And then with, you know, all the different mediums and way that in which people communicate or get ideas or whatever across, um, you know, artists, for like I think for good often um are expected to give a little bit more or mm-hmm. have an expression that's connected with either like a visual representation or a, a, some sort of image or mystique or th- something like that or just a consistent right right and something to get out to you know like to because people have so many different uh things they can consume musically or art wise yeah. right now um you have to give them like a an image or whatever. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you don't really think about that, what it is or how it represents or what it represents. Um, and then you look back and like, ah, oh, well, that's not, I mean, that's not really what the song was or that's not really like, you know, I'm not, I don't feel that way today. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I guess that's why. That's, that, cool. that's Just it. like revising yourself, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. the same way you would yeah. a song. I like the way you broke down that like, people needing more. Right. And and the artists that can do all of that that like I'm I'm baffled when I'm like in, in a room with the artists and like yeah, you know, this song so like what I'm envisioning also for the video is yeah. this and we're talking about this and I'm like damn. <laughs> like I get I like my I stop at the song. Like when the song is done I I'm, I'm like yeah. Shh, I did it. And I went through that, you know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that that, that, should, you know. that seems like enough. But then then there's the whole like social media piece on top of that. Right, exactly. How how are you with that stuff? I'm terrible. Uh, like I just figured out Instagram. Mm. Uh, I have, or the band has a Twitter. I haven't figured out how to use it exactly. It's just uh, I, like yeah, no, that's I, something like, and even though like I, like I joke about it because I do understand like how to post things and things like that. But like, that's not the way that I'm comfortable expressing myself. Mm-hmm. Like you know, like I didn't grow up really using it like the the internet like that Mm -hmm. and communicating like that so i don't feel comfortable like or i don't know i can't put my ideas into like uh, however many characters that is both like interesting and funny and sharp you know like and like builds a brand right you know like that's not grammar right and grammar like like, uh, exactly yeah Yeah. i think your dad's not gonna yeah exactly (laughs) you call right hey hey, 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 (laughs) those those are the calls i get every day using the oxford comment (laughs) (laughs) okay right i see you (laughs) it's a little passive voice (laughs) there so (laughs) speak with your chest (laughs) use your voice (laughs) But, but to that point i was talking with my brother who's an artist yesterday and he was talking about like saying no at this point he's not comfortable like trading his time and energy and mental space for constantly by broad constantly having to broadcast his life out for that like that's just that equation doesn't like feel right to him Mm -hmm. now and i'm you know as someone advising and managing i'm like okay that's fine you get to make that choice but there are exactly exactly get certain things or don't get other things because of that which is like a lot of pressure. And so the reason why I brought it up to you is because y'all have been doing this for so long. Yeah. And you've seen, you know, we talk about waves up here totally. in the in the creative community of the city. Let's say, you know, four years ago so, or five years ago, 2013, 2014, looking at the scene around you, what would be like, what were you expecting this moment to look like if you were expecting anything? And what's surprising that like is or isn't here? Um. 
So when like when like Nick and I started making music in the city, um, there wasn't the same sort of like for lack of a better word, like community of mm-hmm. musicians. Mm-hmm. It was pretty much like it was pretty cutthroat. Like in terms of like people weren't trying to build together. They're like, you made music with your own little crew and you didn't really talk to each other. And that was within like the past or after about like two years, there was a different wave of, I don't know, um, of musicians and artists and thinkers and people started collaborating and that collaborating and building spaces together, Mm -hmm. like with the intentions of it. Um, Mm -hmm. And that transformation I think for me um, was one of the biggest things um, and biggest blessings of my life. Um, I don't know what sort of yeah. music does, I would be making. Does it feel like it's still in that mode now? Does it feel like it's evolving to a next stage for you? I think it's, I think there's other, other, other things at play. Yeah. Um, you what know? do you mean by that? Um, much yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's other things are at play because the, you know, everybody, Chicago has gotten recognition. Artists have gotten recognition from here. People are like, for the first time, some of them like realizing like, oh, I can pay my bills off of like, mm-hmm. and I can eat off of the work that I do. And, travel and the world. right. And those things um, are amazing. That's what, like everybody should want to do. Um, but uh, that also brings with it, you know, a bunch of other intentions and a bunch of other people that don't have the intentions yeah. uh, or at least the groundedness and, and what happens here. Uh, but, that's the still crew of reefiness. <laughs> hey, right, the, the, the they're back. Are <laughs> it's like a, a Walking Dead type. <laughs> <laughs> so that's hilarious. So, um, with that, kind of yeah. like a a, a two part question. As somebody who kind of like saw a, a, a shift or a transition, what did you observe that allowed that transformation from a more isolated, competitive landscape? to a more cooperative, collective landscape? And what type of things do you think need to be done to protect it now that the scale has expanded totally. and it's more vulnerable? I mean, I think, I think, I mean, one of the reasons why, and this is like, one of the reasons why I think that transition happened in terms of people starting to collaborate with each other and not such a sort of cutthroat sp- space was, A, I, I, I'd really have to, put a lot of or a lot of um thanks to the, the different spaces that youth had to like mm-hmm. throughout high school and and elementary school to build those sort of things um because that taught people uh I think how to create and and, and share with each other uh mm-hmm. that I don't think was there and at least in the uh, particularly the hip hop Hit the 2000s hip hop in Chicago was <laughs> it was rough out here. Uh, if you were a Kanye, yeah, um, yeah, it's like but what drug dealer? Will, right, exactly. Will, uh, bribe GCI to get my song right, exactly. in the rotation it's, for the summer. Exactly. <laughs> like, um, and shout out to Clear Channel, I think sarcastically. It's, it's real different to finesse a suburban kid than it is to try to finesse a drug dealer. <laughs> yes, yes. You might still get finesse. <laughs> yes. We changed yes. the finesse. That's that's what happened. We just figured it out. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Let's expand beyond the city boundaries for who we finesse for studio time. I think that's funny. Let's get some of this legit money paid for my studio. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think part of the ways to protect it, um, I think it, in general, most of the people have done a pretty good job of um pointing folks out, you know, or, or like, you know, I don't know, uh of in general, um not giving the whatever you want to call them the the folks that are in it for not the right reasons or not part of not trying to be a part of uh that community but just like take what they can from it and and dip um they don't get too far mm-hmm. um you know like and people really protect are really protective around each other in the spaces that you know are really mean a lot to us mm-hmm. um and so definitely those are people floating around but I feel like, um, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, yeah, they're not at my pig roast or at my (laughs) table. So keep it very selective. (laughs) (laughs) 
You want a piece of this pig? <laughs> hey, be about it. Hey. <laughs> no pigs at the pig <laughs> Yes, that's rule number one. <laughs> There's only one pig. <laughs> oh, that's one pig. Yeah. So I, I don't even know if you can answer this next question because I, I imagine it's just always been there. But between the music and how you address the world and even the conversation we're just having about social media, yeah. uh, you have a, a, a very old soul, a very aged soul. So for folks who didn't see you come in, which is everybody who's hearing this, um, you came in with a, a tape recorder of some sort. Uh, for those who've never been to WSBK, we have this large re- vinyl record library and like you were almost late coming into the show because you're just like a kid in a candy store. Right, I was like, what is all of this? <laughs> um, and, and then musically, I think uh, y'all kind of like defy time in in some real ways do you have an understanding of where that comes from or yeah cultivate that intentionally or is that just uh rock? i know that uh yeah it goes back to my parents uh like you know i wasn't a lot like you weren't allowed to put anything on the radio or anything in the crib or in the car so no B96. Yeah, no, it was no, it was it was, <laughs> it was no, <laughs> no hibbity hop music, none of that. Uh and you know, that was a really, you know, I hated it when I was younger. Um, but for me, um, you know, growing up on old school soul and jazz and 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 things like that, as well as you know, old school Cuban music, um that that for me turned like a big circle once I started making music and really falling in love with hip hop and getting involved with that in middle school, like recognizing that the music that my parents were playing um, was just like, it was, it was like, it, 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 that's that's where the music I was listening to came from, and right. my dad definitely made sure that I knew that. He's like, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, he's like, you know, oh, that what you're listening to. We did that in the seventies, <laughs> like, you know, like Again, and, classic dad. <laughs> classic dad. You know, yeah, he kind of moved the whole weekend. In, in dad four, yeah, yeah, he's 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 fully evolved. <laughs> he's, he's fully yeah, he's, yeah, 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 he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's, 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 he's final four dad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> D, he's a capital D A D dad. This is what Daniel said about his own father. <laughs> he's a final form dad. But so let's talk about that Cuban music a little yeah, bit. Yeah, let's get yeah. to um, first of all, what's the connection for those who don't know? And also like when you say old school Cuban music, what kind of music are we talking? Are we talking the Afro Latin jazz stuff? What are we talking? Yeah, we're talking a bunch. Uh, I mean my mother's my mother was born in Cuba. Um and so, and my grandparents lived with me, uh, my Cuban grandparents for a large part of my childhood. So, and they didn't speak really any English when they did live with us. Um, and yeah, I mean, when we like got our first stereo in the house, um, like my dad went to this, my dad and my mom went to the store and got two, two like four CD box sets. And that was literally how I woke up every single day for at least a decade of my life early as hell in the morning, full blast. And it was either James Brown or Tito Puente. And that's mm-hmm. like how I woke up every day. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Uh, that's pretty good too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you go get this blackness. And you go <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get this exactly. Exactly. You know, <laughs> Nothing yeah, else yeah exactly. <laughs> you to listen to no rock music. <laughs> none of that. You you're waking up to sports talk. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah. So, I think that's where it comes from. And where do you think that, you know, in the in the wonderful mix that is the music y'all make, where do you think the, the Cuban influence shows up, if it does at all? Um, I think it shows up in certain spaces, definitely in um in some of the percussion, because I, I that was my first mm-hmm. my first instrument was Latin percussion. So I do some of the percussion uh on that. But then also, um, you know, like in the writing and arranging and some of the you know, the way I like sit down and write a song, generally I'm going to feel it hella syncopated. <laughs> I mean, you know, like in terms of phrasing, in terms of that, and that all comes from, yeah. you know, it comes from... Clave the hell out yes, of exactly. Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll hear it <laughs> if you listen. Um, and hopefully um, in the music to come, it'll it'll start showing itself. I mean, I on a project with Nico Segal, mm. my other Cuban brother, um, uh, we have a song in Spanish, it's a bolero, uh, oh, where cool. like I grew up listening to and singing the only few guitar lessons i had mm. my mom made sure they were 
only teaching me boleros. Thank you for that, mom. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and is that something that's out now or is that something that's coming or this? Oh, that's something that's been out. Um, and like, you know, a lot of the writing and, you know, me and Kaina have been performing a lot of Spanish tunes yeah. recently. And so it's definitely, you know, if, if you catch me playing music in the world, chances are you're going to hear something in Spanish or that has that sort of uh, vibe, at that, least these days. That's ill. <laughs> <laughs> How, um, so outside of like, you know, the music and the arranging and like rhythm and rhyme, mm-hmm. how does, how do you interpret how your Afro-Cuban heritage impacts the way you interact with the world? Because the big thing that actually your dad was pushing for politically uh, was about how we address the diaspora, how we address Latin America and South America and like deprioritize the United States and our understanding of struggle and our uh-huh. understanding of liberation and even in our understanding of blackness and state right. violence. Um, and so, you know, that also being in your body, uh, how, how do you see that like impact in the way you move within community and space? Um, I think for me, um, for me, it's been... It's been a very, like, it has been some of the more defining part of, like, me. Um, mostly because when people see me, um, they don't know what the hell I am. Mm. Unless they're Latino, and then generally they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, and for me, that has been, um, you know, at least the way that, the way that race has played out in dealing with my Cuban family or dealing with, mm-hmm. you know, L- Latino folks, it, it plays out in a very different way. Yeah. Um, and to be, you know, both black from here and then also Latino, like to watch it and feel it um, on, on both of those planes in different places is a, uh, I don't know. It's it's a lot. I don't know how to. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to be able to break it down because that's like Your whole not, that's my whole life. I'm trying to figure that out right now. Um, and like different yeah. sets of rules. Obviously. Yeah. You know, and like governing principles right. for how people see each other. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's so super interesting. In Cuba, like yeah. Cuban racial strike is completely different. Yeah, yes. and they just say there is no racism here. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that sounds like a, a real Cuban thing. No, no, but that's also, but also that's also you know that's also very like something that happens throughout a lot of America also, which is like, Oh, we're rainbow, we're rainbow culture, you know, blah, blah, blah. There is no racism. And then low key, then the black people are the people getting shafted. And so like, yeah, I don't buy that shit. (laughs) (laughs) So we're running a little bit out of time and we forgot to ask you up top. We sometimes end with like an on air little performance, no pressure. Would you be down to sing something or play something? I completely forgot to ask you before. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Yeah, I mean, but well, I can grab your guitar yeah, for you. And I mean, you I, yeah, yeah. So as as you yeah, get prepared okay. for that, yeah, I'm and see. apologize for the pro, we don't mean to put you on the spot. If it yeah. if it don't feel good, we'll edit it out in post. <laughs> and only folks listening live will, will get that awkwardness. But so so you got agency and freedom. So don't yeah, feel yeah, no, yeah, no, I'm just don't feel pressure. But um, <clears throat> this is this is the important part of the show right, right here. So we talked about all the you know, the geopolitics. Yeah, we yeah. talked about family history. We talked about cultural spaces, but this right now, what we're about to do, this game we're about to play is the cornerstone of our show. Mm-hmm. And it's about accountability. Uh, and so for the, the hardcore Ergo listeners, they know what's up. Uh, there's, a, there's a sect of the world that I believe in my lifetime, I'm 25 years old, has run amok. And those <laughs> people are R&B singers. Yes. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, you have a, a, a interesting, you're R&B adjacent. Uh-huh. So you have an interesting proximity uh, to, to this world. But we like to reel them in because like, in, you know, in the rap game, if you step out of bounds, you're going to get a diss track coming your way. Yes. There's some built-in accountability. And R&B is just free falling in some ways culturally. Even though there's a lot of, people need to know that there's also a lot of great R&B happening right now. So we're not dissing at all. But the game is you have to start beef with an R&B singer and tell us why. Any era, too. So so you could go back from um, David Ruffin to Tory Lanez. The, the, so like the accompanied R&B. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right um, I would say if there's anybody can start, start beef with, um, who's the dude that is uh, that all the girls like? That's, <laughs> that's a good start. That's, that's from Canada. That's not Drake. Tory Lanez. No, 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 no. Uh, the one... With the Basquiat hair. Hey. Yeah, the whiny one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I can't. I can't. 
I can't go for it. It's it's just yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Fair. that's, that's fair. why. That's, that's fair. fair. I like that you called him the whiny one from Canada. <laughs> yeah. <That's funny>. <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly, not the way he does his bio. <laughs> But not far off. He probably, <laughs> he probably almost self-identifies as the one he will forget. What else could he do? Exactly. Uh, word. That that is valid. That 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 rocks. So as y'all hear, the the strings are the strings are going. For those wondering, that's Damon playing guitar. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, if you're cool with it, you want to take us out on. Yeah. So this is um, this is um. My grandparents' songs. So this is Cuban song. Nice. So there we went with that. Como fue? No sé decirte. Como fue? Ni sé explicarme qué pasó. Pero de ti me enamoré. Fuiste una luz que iluminó todo mi ser. Tu risa como manantial Rego mi vida de tú Ah, this guitar's out of tune. <laughs> Fueron tus manos So tu boca Fueron tus labios O tu voz Fue a lo mejor La impociencia De tanto esperar Tu llegada Mas no sé Como fue Ooh. Beautiful. That was gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for being here. Sharing Thank your you guys thoughts. for having me. You're uh, such a so joy to talk to. Appreciate it. And uh, uh, anything you want to plug, announce, where can they find oh, you? Uh, coming up, you want to be on the lookout for new music. The Omai's oh new music. I know I lied many times the past year or two, but uh, you're the boy. It, it's yeah, album. yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's it's coming. So cool. that's love. Uh, you can find us at Ergo Radio. I'm at Ergo Daniel. I'm at Damon underscore AF. And uh, we'll be back next week with another conversation showcasing and celebrating Chicago and beyond. Much love to the people. Peace. Espero que aquel corazón que te di no lo rompe más. Mujer de mala sentimiento. Lástima que no me quieres más No me quieres más